Did you know that the ancient wisdom of Stoicism, developed over 2,000 years ago, holds the key to turning life's challenges into opportunities? Imagine confronting life's tumults with an unwavering calm, a strength so profound that nothing can disturb your inner peace. It may sound like a superpower, yet it's a practical philosophy that has endured through the ages, from the bustling markets of ancient Rome to the marble halls of Greece. Stoicism teaches us that while we cannot control every circumstance, we possess absolute authority over our reactions. In a world defined by uncertainty, these age-old teachings serve as a stabilizing force. But what exactly is Stoicism? More than mere contemplation, Stoicism is about decisive action. It's about leading a purposeful, resilient, and joyful life regardless of the challenges we encounter. It's not about stifling emotions, but comprehending and mastering them to enhance our existence. Whether confronting stress or adversity, Stoicism equips us with practical tools to navigate life's trials. By focusing on what we can influence and accepting what we cannot, we can maintain our inner balance even amidst turbulence. Stoicism isn't about negating emotions, but embracing them. Through practices like gratitude, mindfulness, and self-awareness, we discover greater joy in the everyday. It's a shift in mindset that empowers us to face life's vicissitudes with wisdom and dignity. So, if you're eager to embark on this transformative journey, join us by subscribing, sharing, and hitting that like button. Stick with us until the end, as each moment of this journey unveils the stoic wisdom that can truly change your life. Number 1. Focusing on what's in your control Have you ever been caught in a traffic snarl, seething with frustration, or found yourself agitated by a harsh comment left on your social media post? It's a common experience where our daily lives seem to be peppered with these little tests that challenge our mood and peace of mind at every corner. But what if there was a transformative perspective from the realm of Stoicism that could flip all that aggravation upside down? Stoicism. This remarkable philosophy hailing from ancient Greece and Rome offers us a potent tool, the focus on what's within our control. The esteemed Stoic philosopher Epictetus once proclaimed, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Ponder that for a moment. Traffic, inclement weather, negative comments, these are beyond our control. We can't alter them, no matter how fervently we wish to. What we can modify is our reaction to them. This concept isn't merely a relic of ancient wisdom. It's corroborated by contemporary psychology. Carl Jung, a luminary in the field of psychology, asserted, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. This resonates with the Stoic ethos. It's about acknowledging that our true power lies in our reactions, thoughts, and actions. Let's delve deeper. Imagine you're ensnared in a traffic jam, anxious about being late for a crucial meeting. You could spend that time simmering in anger, honking incessantly, and stressing, which, frankly, won't expedite the traffic. Or you could take a deep breath, accept the situation, and perhaps use the time to listen to a podcast, an audiobook, or simply savor some music. The traffic remains the same, but your response to it transforms, and with that shift, your stress levels diminish, brightening your day. This stoic principle of concentrating on what we can control transcends mere traffic or weather woes. It's applicable to our personal aspirations, our interactions with others, and our approach to life's hurdles. As Marcus Aurelius, another stoic sage, reminds us, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. So, the next time you feel riled up over something beyond your control, recall these sagacious words from our stoic mentors. Ask yourself, is this within my control? If not, release it. Focus on your reaction, your mindset, and your actions. Number two, embracing obstacles as opportunities. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy, offers a radical approach. It teaches us to see obstacles not as barriers, but as opportunities. 
This might seem counterintuitive at first glance. After all, we're often conditioned to perceive challenges as impediments to our success and well-being. However, Stoic thinkers like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus turn this notion on its head. They encourage us to embrace life's curveballs by asking, what can I learn from this? Rather than lamenting, why me? Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, wrote in his meditations, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. His words suggest that every obstacle is not just a test of our resilience, but also a teacher imparting valuable lessons. It's about discovering the silver lining in difficult situations and harnessing it for personal growth. This stoic perspective is not only rooted in ancient philosophy, but is also supported by modern thinkers. The renowned psychologist Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. When we struggle against challenges, we empower them. By accepting and learning from them, we can transcend them. The Stoic mindset is about transforming trials into stepping stones for becoming stronger and wiser. To put this into practice, consider job rejections. It's natural to feel self-pity and doubt, but what if we viewed each rejection as constructive feedback? Perhaps there's a skill to enhance or a new approach to our job hunt. This shift in perspective can transform a series of rejections into a roadmap for professional growth. Similarly, personal conflicts, while uncomfortable, provide opportunities to practice patience, empathy, and communication skills. Each disagreement is a chance to understand different perspectives and improve our conflict resolution skills. The core of embracing obstacles as opportunities is to ask, what can this situation teach me? Instead of being passive victims of circumstance, we become active learners and problem solvers. This doesn't make facing challenges effortless, but it does mean we approach them with a mindset focused on growth and learning. Epictetus famously said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This encapsulates the essence of stoicism. Looking beyond the immediate discomfort of an obstacle to uncover the lessons and opportunities it offers. When faced with a challenge, pause and reframe it. Ask yourself what you can learn and how it can fortify you. Number three, living in the present moment. Concentrate the mind on the present moment, Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, advised. He recognized the profound power of living in the present. It anchors us clears our minds of distractions, and opens our eyes to the richness of life unfolding before us. Yet, staying present is a challenge. Our minds are often cluttered with thoughts, worries about the future, or replaying the past. This mental chatter distracts us from the beauty and potential of the now. Carl Jung, the renowned psychologist, believed that even the smallest meaningful experience is more valuable than the grandest without purpose. Living in the present moment infuses these small experiences with meaning, enriching our lives immeasurably. Aristotle emphasized mindfulness of the present to achieve eudaimonia, a state of being happy, healthy, and prosperous. By focusing on the now, we can lead a virtuous life and make the most of our human experience. Practicing presence begins with mindfulness, the art of paying attention to the now without judgment. Savor each bite when you eat, feel the ground beneath your feet as you walk, and listen actively to others. These acts of mindfulness reconnect us with the present, enhancing our lives with depth and meaning. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Anxiety about what's to come or what is past only serves to diminish our happiness in the now. Living in the present isn't about ignoring the future or forgetting the past. It's about striking a balance, learning from the past and planning for the future without letting those activities overshadow the present. It's in this balance that we find peace and contentment. Every moment is an opportunity to reset and refocus on the now. It's in the present that we live, love, and create memories. Let's consciously strive to be more present in our lives and cherish the now. For this moment is where life truly happens. Self-discipline often conjures images of rigid schedules and joyless living. However, 
It's time to reshape that perception. Self-discipline isn't about restricting your life. It's about empowering yourself to make choices that align with your deepest values and long-term goals. It's about choosing what's right, not what's easy. At its core, self-discipline is about mastery over oneself. It's about affirming choices that serve us and declining those that don't, even when it's challenging. Whether it's adhering to a workout routine, saving money instead of impulse buying, or turning off Netflix to focus on a project, these choices might not offer instant gratification, but they lay the groundwork for long-term satisfaction and success. Stoic philosophy has much to say about self-discipline. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside of its. This reminds us that self-discipline is ultimately about controlling our inner world, not the external one. Number 4. The Power of Self-Discipline Self-discipline is the art of reigning in our impulses, emotions, and actions, despite the myriad of external temptations and distractions life presents. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, imparts wisdom on this topic, urging us to remain steadfast and control our desires rather than be dominated by them. He recognized that true freedom stems from within, our capacity to self-govern. Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher, highlighted the critical nature of self-discipline, asserting that excellence and virtue are achieved through habit. By practicing self-discipline, we develop habits that guide us towards our ideal selves. It's not about sporadic acts of willpower, but about consistently making choices that mirror our values and aspirations. Carl Jung, a pioneer in psychology, stressed the importance of integrating all facets of our personality to live a fulfilled life. This integration necessitates self-discipline, as we must manage the desires of different parts of our psyche, selecting paths that foster our overall well-being and growth. To build self-discipline in our daily lives, start with small steps. Choose one area to improve, be it diet, exercise, or spending habits. Set clear, attainable goals and approach them one day at a time. Each choice that aligns with your goals fortifies your self-discipline. Epictetus reminds us that no great achievement happens overnight. Self-discipline is cultivated through small, consistent actions. It's about progress, not perfection. Self-discipline is a journey of balance, weighing immediate desires against long-term ambitions. It involves making tough choices that, while difficult in the moment, lead us towards our goals, happiness, and peace in the long run. Let's embark on this journey together encouraging each other to choose what's right, not what's easy. In the realm of self-discipline, we find the pathway to realizing our dreams and living a life we cherish. Life's curveballs inevitably stir a whirlwind of emotions. Feeling angry, sad, or frustrated is part of being human. However, the true test lies not in the emotions we experience, but in how we manage them. Emotional resilience is the superpower that enables us to weather life's storms with grace and emerge stronger. Acknowledging our emotions, understanding them, and then taking positive steps forward prevents us from being overwhelmed by our feelings. Stoic philosophers like Marcus Aurelius emphasize the power we have over our minds, not external events. This profound insight is at the heart of emotional resilience. Recognizing that while we cannot control what happens to us, we can control how we respond. Number 5. Developing Emotional Resilience Emotional resilience is the art of navigating life's adversities without losing our composure, a concept deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy. Seneca, a prominent Stoic, viewed life's challenges as opportunities to test and strengthen our character. By approaching our emotions with understanding and patience, we can emerge wiser and more resilient. The journey to emotional resilience begins with self-awareness. Mindfulness of our emotions and reactions allows us to better comprehend our inner landscape. It's natural to experience a range of emotions, but the key is to respond thoughtfully in ways that reflect our values and contribute to our long-term well-being. Aristotle's concept of the golden mean, the balance between excess and deficiency, beautifully encapsulates the essence of emotional resilience. It's about finding a balanced response to our emotions, 
neither suppressing them nor allowing them to dominate us. Carl Jung, a pioneer in psychology, highlighted the importance of integrating all aspects of our psyche to achieve wholeness, which includes confronting and understanding our emotions. When strong emotions grip us, the first step is to permit ourselves to feel them, acknowledging them without judgment. Reflecting on what triggers these emotions can offer valuable insights into our emotional patterns and triggers. As Epictetus famously said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Our responses to emotions shape our experiences, and by choosing constructive and healing reactions, we foster emotional resilience. Developing emotional resilience is an ongoing process that involves practicing mindfulness, self-reflection, and patience. Building a toolkit of coping strategies, such as journaling, confiding in a trusted friend, or engaging in relaxation techniques, is crucial. Above all, it's about treating ourselves with kindness and compassion as we navigate our emotional landscape. Emotional resilience isn't about the absence of negative emotions. It's about learning to gracefully ride their waves and emerging stronger and more self-aware. By cultivating emotional resilience, we empower ourselves to face life's challenges with courage and poise. As we embrace this journey, let's support each other in becoming more emotionally resilient ultimately leading to a more fulfilling life. Memento Mori, the stoic reminder that we will die, is not intended to instill fear, but to inspire a deeper appreciation for every moment. Stoic thinkers like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus use this concept to encourage living fully, consciously, and with gratitude for the present. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on life's fleeting nature in his meditations, urging us to live authentically according to our values and to make the most of the time we have. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think, he advised. This contemplation of mortality isn't about fostering sadness, but about celebrating the preciousness of life. Number six, memento mori remember you will die. Memento mori, the stoic reminder that we will die, serves as a call to action to focus on what truly matters, urging us to let go of trivial concerns and live with purpose and integrity. Seneca spoke of life's brevity, encouraging us not to squander time on inconsequential matters, but to create a meaningful life. He believed that mindfulness of mortality inspires us to live wisely and cherish our relationships and experiences. Epictetus highlighted the importance of living in the present and making the most of our time, suggesting that by remembering our mortality, we are more inclined to live ethically and appreciate life's beauty and richness. Incorporating memento mori into our lives doesn't have to cast a shadow over our existence. Instead, we can view it as a powerful motivator to live fully, embrace the present, and not delay our dreams or happiness for an uncertain future. Consider the pursuits you've been postponing, whether it's following a passion, reconnecting with loved ones, or simply savoring the small joys of daily life. Memento Mori reminds us not to take our time for granted. It encourages us to live authentically, speak our truth, love openly, and be present in our lives. This awareness also teaches us to appreciate life's impermanence, deepening our gratitude for the moments we have. When we acknowledge that our time is finite, we're more likely to value our experiences, live mindfully, and express gratitude for the people and moments that enrich our lives. Let's use memento mori, not as a source of fear, but as a catalyst for growth, gratitude, and a deeper appreciation of life. It reminds us to align our choices with our deepest values, cherish our relationships, and relish the beauty of the present moment. Remembering that we will die one day encourages us to live more fully today. In embracing memento mori, we find a powerful impetus to celebrate life, not in fear of death, but in love with life itself. Let's live so that when our time comes, we can look back without regrets, knowing we lived fully, loved deeply, and appreciated the incredible journey that is life. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the importance of being present and finding joy in life's simplicity. He said, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, 
to enjoy, to love. This is the essence of gratitude, recognizing the inherent value of life itself. Number seven, practicing gratitude. Gratitude, according to Seneca, is the antidote to the endless pursuit of more, a pursuit that often leads us away from true satisfaction. He taught that by appreciating what we already possess, we can discover genuine contentment. Epictetus, with his pragmatic Stoic philosophy, urged his students to value their current circumstances, whatever they may be, believing that acceptance and appreciation of the present can lead to a more fulfilling life. But how do we cultivate gratitude, particularly when faced with life's inevitable challenges? It begins with establishing a daily routine. Each morning or evening, take a moment to reflect on three things you're thankful for. These can be as simple as enjoying a warm cup of coffee, a meaningful conversation with a friend, or the beauty of a sunset. This practice can rewire our brains to focus on the positive, enhancing our mood and overall perspective on life. Gratitude also involves embracing challenges and seeking the lessons they offer. Instead of questioning why difficulties occur, we can ask what we can learn from them. This shift in perspective allows us to view all experiences, both positive and negative, as valuable steps in our life's journey. Expressing gratitude strengthens our connections with others. A simple act of thanks can significantly impact someone's day and reinforce our bonds. Aristotle emphasized the importance of acknowledging the good in our lives and striving for a virtuous existence. He saw gratitude as a crucial element in achieving eudaimonia, or true happiness, as it enables us to recognize the goodness that surrounds us and resides within us. Contemporary psychology echoes the benefits of gratitude. Studies have shown that those who practice gratitude regularly experience reduced anxiety, improved sleep, and a more optimistic outlook on life. Carl Jung believed that happiness would lose its meaning without sadness. By being grateful for the full range of our experiences, we discover a deeper, more authentic form of happiness. Let's make gratitude a foundational aspect of our daily lives. Celebrate the small victories, cherish moments of connection, and find joy in simple pleasures. By focusing on what we have, rather than what we lack, we foster a sense of abundance and inner happiness. Number 8. The Stoic Path to Personal Excellence the Stoics profoundly grasped personal excellence, viewing virtue as the ultimate good and the goal of life. Marcus Aurelius, a paragon of Stoic philosophy, famously said, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This succinct yet profound directive captures the essence of personal excellence, living out the virtues we esteem daily. Seneca underscored the significance of self-improvement and lifelong learning, advocating for a life aligned with nature and reason, where true excellence emanates from within and is manifested in our actions and decisions. Epictetus emphasized personal responsibility in attaining excellence, teaching that our responses, emotions, and willpower are within our control and that mastery over them is crucial for a virtuous life. In our everyday lives, focusing on personal excellence means setting standards based on our values and goals, rather than societal expectations or others' achievements. It's about self-awareness, recognizing our strengths and weaknesses, and taking consistent steps toward improvement. Resilience is a key component of personal excellence, how we react to setbacks and failures, not just our triumphs. Aristotle believed that excellence is the result of deliberate intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution, stating, excellence is never an accident. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. This philosophy encourages us to view challenges as learning opportunities rather than obstacles. Modern psychology's concept of a growth mindset aligns with this pursuit of excellence, advocating the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This mindset inspires us to welcome challenges persevere through difficulties, and regard effort as the pathway to mastery. Living authentically is also integral to personal excellence. It involves being true to ourselves and our values, even when it's challenging 
in making choices that reflect our identity and aspirations. Gratitude, as previously discussed, complements personal excellence by fostering a positive outlook that nurtures our growth and well-being. Let's commit to personal excellence, setting our own standards, embracing our unique paths, and taking pride in our progress. It's not about perfection. It's about being proud of who we are and how we live, celebrating our efforts, learning from our experiences, and continually striving to be the best versions of ourselves. Together, let's make personal excellence not just a goal but a way of life. Number 8. The Stoic Path to Personal Excellence The Stoics profoundly grasped personal excellence, viewing virtue as the ultimate good and the goal of life. Marcus Aurelius, a paragon of Stoic philosophy, famously said, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This succinct yet profound directive captures the essence of personal excellence, living out the virtues we esteem daily. Seneca underscored the significance of self-improvement and lifelong learning, advocating for a life aligned with nature and reason, where true excellence emanates from within and is manifested in our actions and decisions. Epictetus emphasized personal responsibility in attaining excellence, teaching that our responses, emotions, and willpower are within our control and that mastery over them is crucial for a virtuous life. In our everyday lives, focusing on personal excellence means setting standards based on our values and goals, rather than societal expectations or others' achievements. It's about self-awareness, recognizing our strengths and weaknesses, and taking consistent steps toward improvement. Resilience is a key component of personal excellence, how we react to setbacks and failures, not just our triumphs. Aristotle believed that excellence is the result of deliberate intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution, stating, excellence is never an accident. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives, choice, not chance, determines your destiny. This philosophy encourages us to view challenges as learning opportunities rather than obstacles. Modern psychology's concept of a growth mindset aligns with this pursuit of excellence, advocating the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This mindset inspires us to welcome challenges, persevere through difficulties, and regard effort as the pathway to mastery. Living authentically is also integral to personal excellence. It involves being true to ourselves and our values, even when it's challenging, and making choices that reflect our identity and aspirations. Gratitude, as previously discussed, complements personal excellence by fostering a positive outlook that nurtures our growth and well-being. Let's commit to personal excellence, setting our own standards, embracing our unique paths, and taking pride in our progress. It's not about perfection. It's about being proud of who we are and how we live, celebrating our efforts, learning from our experiences, and continually striving to be the best versions of ourselves. Together, let's make personal excellence not just a goal but a way of life. Number 9. Not caring what others think. The Stoics understood the paradox of self-love versus societal approval. Marcus Aurelius mused on why we value others' opinions over our own, revealing a common struggle with external validation. Seneca and Epictetus echoed this, advocating for a life aligned with personal values rather than societal expectations, emphasizing that true contentment and power lie within our own actions and virtues. To care less about others' opinions and more about our authenticity, we must first recognize that we are the authors of our own stories. Our worth is defined by our values, the kindness we share, and our efforts to be our best selves. Self-reflection is crucial. Asking ourselves if we are living according to our desires or conforming to others' expectations. Embracing vulnerability and acknowledging that perfection is unattainable allows us to grow and attract those who value our true selves. Aristotle's concept of the golden mean teaches us to find balance including how we regard others' opinions. It's about weighing constructive feedback against our autonomy and self-worth. A stoic mindset helps us build an inner fortress, impervious to the fleeting opinions of others, and commit to valuing ourselves for who we are, not for external validation. 
By living authentically and aligning with our values, we thrive with the confidence that comes from genuine self-expression. Our worth is inherent and unique, and by being true to ourselves, we shine our light most authentically. Accepting change is essential for our growth and happiness. The Stoics remind us that change is the only constant in life. Embracing change and the inevitable shifts it brings is not just necessary but vital. Learning to adapt and go with the flow allows us to grow and find happiness in life's dynamic nature. Number 10. Accepting Change Navigating change can be less daunting and more of an adventure when viewed through the Stoic lens. The Stoics embrace change as an integral part of the universe's rhythm. Marcus Aurelius advised us to accept what destiny weaves for us, as it fits our needs in ways we might not immediately understand. This acceptance allows us to see change, whether perceived as good or bad, as a necessary chapter in our life's narrative. Seneca warned against becoming overly attached to our current state, as it is bound to change, leading to disappointment. He counseled flexibility and understanding that change is not only a part of life but essential for our growth and happiness. Epictetus taught us to differentiate between what is within our control and what is not, empowering us to focus on our reactions and the growth opportunities that change presents. To become more accepting of change, we must first recognize its inevitability. Everything is in flux. Seasons, relationships, even ourselves. Embracing change is embracing life. Practicing mindfulness helps us appreciate our present experiences without clinging to them, preparing us for their inevitable evolution. Seeking lessons in change allows us to view shifts as stepping stones for personal development. Aristotle emphasized the pursuit of a virtuous life, including adaptability, as the key to happiness. Virtue involves gracefully navigating life's changes and finding balance within its flux. Modern psychology aligns with this stoic approach, suggesting that viewing change as an opportunity rather than a threat can reduce stress and enhance resilience. Let's remind ourselves that change is not merely an ordeal to endure but a natural and enriching part of our journey. By accepting change, we open ourselves to new experiences, growth, and the beautiful unfolding of our unique paths. Remember, going with the flow is not about passivity. It's about actively engaging with life's dynamic complexity. Let's navigate the currents of change with courage, grace, and an open heart to the endless possibilities that change brings. In our shared journey through life, practicing compassion and empathy bridges the gaps between our differences. By fostering understanding and a caring attitude towards others, we navigate the complex tapestry of human experience together. Number 11. Practicing Compassion and Empathy In the pursuit of making the world a kinder, more loving place, the Stoics, those venerable sages of ancient times, held the virtues of compassion and empathy in high regard. They saw the interconnectedness of humanity and believed that acts of kindness and understanding were crucial to living a virtuous life. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic emperor, reminded us that as social beings, our well-being is intertwined with that of others, much like the harmony within a hive is essential for the bee's survival. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, stressed the importance of treating others with kindness and generosity recognizing compassion as an innate human trait that benefits both the giver and receiver. He urged us to extend empathy even to those who have wronged us, acknowledging their own struggles and limitations. Epictetus, known for his practical Stoic teachings, encouraged understanding others' perspectives, not to excuse harmful behavior but to approach others with empathy and seek to comprehend their experiences. Practicing compassion and empathy in daily life begins with active listening, truly hearing the stories, experiences, and feelings of those around us. It's about empathizing with their struggles and joys, fears and hopes, and fostering a sense of shared humanity. Acts of kindness, no matter how small, can significantly impact someone's day, signaling that they are seen and valued. Being present for others in times of need, offering support without judgment, and recognizing the inherent value and dignity of every individual are also ways to practice these virtues. Aristotle, the ancient philosopher, 
highlighted the role of empathy in forming strong, meaningful relationships where true friends share in each other's joys and sorrows with understanding and support. Modern psychology affirms the stoic emphasis on compassion and empathy, showing that these virtues not only improve our relationships, but also contribute to our emotional well-being. By caring for others, we foster a sense of belonging, purpose, and happiness in our own lives. Let's remember that every person has a story, every action a reason, and by offering understanding and care, we contribute to a gentler world. As we spread kindness, we create ripples of compassion that transform the world, one empathetic act at a time. Number 12. The Stoic Ritual of Reflection Regular reflection is akin to anchoring ourselves amidst life's relentless rush, ensuring we're not adrift but navigating a course true to our essence. The Stoics, with their deep understanding of human nature, esteemed the act of reflection. Marcus Aurelius, through his introspective writings, demonstrated that self-examination is vital for a virtuous and purposeful existence, asserting that the quality of our thoughts dictates the happiness of our lives. Seneca advocated for self-assessment to foster self-improvement and wisdom, likening life to a play where we must periodically review our roles and performances. Are we in harmony with the character we aspire to be? Do our actions reflect the script we value? The script of our lives? Epictetus encouraged a daily review of actions and attitudes, not as an exercise in self-criticism, but as a means to self-awareness and growth, prompting us to consider what we've done well, where we've erred, and what duties we've neglected. Incorporating this stoic practice into our modern lives begins with establishing it as a habit. Dedicate time each day, perhaps before sleep, to reflect on your day's victories, challenges, and responses. While mental reflection is beneficial, writing down these thoughts can provide a tangible record of your journey. Use reflection as a tool for gratitude, acknowledging the moments, however small, that brought joy or gratitude, thus fostering a positive outlook on life. Approach this practice with kindness and compassion towards yourself. Reflection is about recognizing mistakes as learning opportunities, treating yourself with the same understanding and support you would offer a dear friend. Aristotle emphasized the importance of a reflective life, believing that true wisdom stems from self-understanding. By embracing the stoic ritual of reflection, we can steer our lives more consciously, making adjustments that align with our ideals and cultivating a deeper sense of self-awareness and wisdom.